Folks, remember when there were space Nazis? Yeah, they're still there, but I mean, we were just chasing a rune drive and stepping up to a lowly Sardot of the Aslanti Empire. How did we go from a prison moon and asteroid lab to bumbling around in the esoteric peculiarities of planes beyond our comprehension? What happened? Where did we go wrong? And of course, there's no one around to make sense of this madness, no witch warper or anything like that. The characters are only just now peeking behind the veil of the shadow plane, and thankfully we as players have some resources to understand what the shadow plane is. Speaking of, I'd like to give a big shout out to Zach on his exploration of the many planes that composed the Great Beyond back in episode 89. As he mentioned, the topic is a bit heady and dense, so thank you, Zach, for distilling this cosmic truth for further exploration. So turn off your lights and turn up your anxiety as we delve into this tenebrous realm. Now, I feel a quick recap of what the shadow plane is would be a good launch pad. So to start things off, the material plane resides within positive energy, the force behind creation and life, whereas the shadow plane serves as the foil. This overlapping transitive plane is governed by negative energy. These are the forces of entropy and undeath. While this whole deal with positive and negative energy may be interpreted as conflicting forces, more accurate description would be that they are two halves of a whole, in much the same way that the principles of yin and yang define an equilibrium. Even in such a place where decay is the primary influence, life can still be found in the shadow plane. And that's what I'm here to talk about today the denizens of the shadow plane. Now, aside from the flora and fauna, sentient species also reside here, carving out settlements or even proper civilizations. Some of these are native to the plane, while others are interplanar exiles or immigrants. Among the native inhabitants, someone visiting the shadow planes is bound to run across the Desiriacs, an insectoid race reminiscent of Galarian's termites. They're seven feet tall, bipedal, and decorated all over with glowing runes. Their cities resemble hives that rise from subterranean levels and stretch towards the twilight skies, also illuminated and serving as an eerie beacon in this otherwise monochromatic landscape. Despite the gloom, these people utilize light in their culture, from the runes covering their bodies, their starships, as well as the variety of goods they craft and sell. Another native of the Shadow Plains, the Weiyong, are an old race of small humanoids that once thrived across the plain, according to ancient historical records. At some point, this collection of people undertook a mass exodus to the material plane. Recently, however, it was revealed that several tribes had returned to the shadow plane and established residency on a remote planet in the vast of shadow space called Utana. These people still follow long-held spiritual beliefs that they express through ritual scarification and skin bleaching, which serves as a hard contrast to their love of bright clothing and jewelry. To this day, people can still find Weiyangs in both the material and shadow planes alike, traveling the stars in elaborate festival ships crafted to house and amuse guests on long-term voyages. Moving on to outsiders who now call the shadow plane home, the Shays, are a people composed of living shadow who claim to have once been humanoids that have since transcended physical form. From this evolution emerged a sense of superiority over beings that have not similarly ascended. Despite this, shays will still interact with other humanoids, but require wearing masks and form-fitting clothes to ease any humanoid's efforts in discerning a shay. These interactions have resulted in some humanoids becoming followers of Shay, intrigued by their otherworldly mystique and eager to learn the secrets of shadow transformation. Reports indicate that Shay once had a primary citadel within the shadow plane, yet, like Galarian itself, it too had disappeared during the gap. Most now have established residency in the shadow star system they call Sheth, from where they travel shadow space on elegant starships pursuing new pleasures and novelties. Another one of the Shadow Plane's more outlandish outsiders are the Excaliad species. A mystery to everyone, these surreal absurdities arrived during the gap and no prior records exist. An Excaliad, lacking any standard form, is an assemblage of eyes bound together by gelatinous goo that can reform its frame to fit the task. Their mysterious appearances often seem to relate to exploration or confrontation, some of which result in violence. 
Unable to communicate with these outsiders, their goals and why they appear when and where they do eludes everyone. And folks, while I find much joy in discovering these new places and people, unfortunately, that's all the time I have for today. I could go on about Kyals and others that inhabit this plane, but these creatures stood out and I felt inspired to explore their place here where they bring life to the shadow plane, odd though it may be. But for now, let's move onward in our pursuit of Kaon Reese, in episode 99, where Seize the Day. Alright, alright. Enough of this dark bullshit. Who are we? We're Southern Tom Fullery. And Heath, how excited are you to finally go to a packed world planet? I'm pretty pumped. I've been waiting to do this. I know, you've been talking ever. about this from the get A year and a half, probably. Well, I mean, my favorite book is The Packed Worlds because like, literally every time I read it, even if I read a couple of pages, I get an idea for like a one-shot or an adventure or something like that. Just from little, like, I could read one little snippet and be like, that's such good fodder mm-hmm. for Starfinder material that the company is not fucking using. You know, like, let's go to all these planets. I want adventure paths that entirely take place on one planet. You know, like, I I want these planets so bad. Well, that defeats the purpose of having a spaceship. You know, no, it doesn't, because you can do whatever you want in other adventures, but like, give us the option to be on the packed world you gave us. Right now, we're here. We're (laughs) at Versus. Um, I, I know I know that you've studied verses and and I know Josh you have a little bit too since your character is from verses how's that what is that like to have to not only are we going to one of the main packed worlds but it's like your home planet well when I was making the character I didn't realize we'd be going there of course so not. that's interesting yeah yeah um, I mean like yeah you weren't that's neither here nor there. What I'm sure. saying is, here we are. What is that like for you and for Fell to some degree? I mean, you don't got to get in all the the feelings of Fell, but you know, your character is now returning home. What? It's cool and also a little bit daunting because mm-hmm. you know it's it's a planet. It's, it's an entire planet. planet. There's a lot, and mm-hmm. I don't want to get stuff wrong. To be but, fair, 80% of the planet is uninhabited. Yeah, yeah but there's a whole ring like, of nations running around the equator. So Yeah, it's a whole equator. You got a whole equator of a planet. The ring of nations, it's a pretty cool thing, right? Yeah. You know? it's, I mean, you only have so much space to live on, on Versys, so of course it gets built up into this like night city type cyberpunk-ish uh I, I don't know. I, I don't want to call it a dystopia because it's not really a bad place, but there are a lot of cyberpunk is right. Uh, you not know, like, great things that happen there. A lot of corporate espionage and stuff. You know, it's, it's a high tech thing. city. Yeah. Right. But there's yeah. a lot of great things that have been spawned from there too. Like Versys is the, <clears throat> they founded the stewards and the stewards came like they were the governing peacekeeping body of Versys before they became the pact world's police. Mm. Mm hmm. Also, yeah. we said that the Ring of Nations is around the equator because their day and night cycle doesn't work. How metal is this? In the uh, in the book, they refer to it as a Terminator, not a fucking <laughs> equator. <Yeah. laughs> Jeez, Louise! Wow. wow. Jeez. And and because of that, it's essentially like I said before, Night City from Cyberpunk or uh, well, Los Angeles and Blade Runner, but always dusk. Yeah, which well, is the, so I mean, cool. I, I know you got to be excited because cyberpunk is your jam. I've been mm-hmm. te- I've been telling you since we started. Just wait, just wait till signal screams. For, what a year and a half now? Yeah, like you're gonna love longer it. than that since before we started recording this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So here we are. We're in cyberpunk planet. You know, like this is this is all the cyberpunk in this planet. Yeah. Um, and so I'm looking forward to it. We're getting into book two of Signal Screams proper now. Um, 
as far as the the present action and uh you know, last episode we we ended with your arrival, and let's dig into that a little bit more as you make your way into Versi's atmosphere itself. You kind of get closer to you know where Kuvakara is, and you see that beneath an early evening sky stained with crimson and gold, a craggy island rises a thousand feet above blue gray waters. A white dome-shaped structure occupies most of the island's surface. Concrete landing pads jut out from the island's cliffs, illuminated by blinking blue and green lights. Other ships coast toward the spaceport in slow spirals. Now, this is not Sky Dock, by the way. Sky Dock is a little on, outside of Kuvakara. It's kind of got some distance because it's so big or whatever. So this is just Kuvakara's spaceport that you see here. You also see a sprawling city of dazzling skyscrapers, laced with a grid of roadways and elevated transport tubes containing trains, glitters across the river to the south. Visible even from this height, hollow billboards advertising a range of products in common and Versite flicker in the dusky light. And so this is kind of what you see as you land on this the spaceport fell how are you feeling like this is the first time you've been back on verses in seven years nervous you know? and excited anxious yeah. you know i i imagine i mean are you like pointing anything out to your crew like oh look there's the you know the assembly of nations you can see it from here or is, is no, that kind of, that's not really fell style not really fell style and he's still uh, a little bit not gonna say shaken but shooketh <laughs> from the previous experience and is is looking for looking to looking forward to setting the epic tracer down and getting some time to hopefully get some time to uh work on her for a little bit and just you know his, have his meditation in a sense well i mean you would know that really like Okay, then he's wishing that he could be doing that. He's wishing he could go there and do that. Well, like, I mean, so you're landing in the spaceport, which you would know would house your starship. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And you can always go, I mean, you basically just rent a dock, you know? Um, and so anytime during your downtime here, you'll be able to go and work on it. But they also offer to you any... any um, services that you would typically want you know they have pretty solid mechanics here not robots right uh yeah i mean but it's <laughs> also <laughs> but, but also a lot of augmented verthani yeah you know yeah. when you when you land on the platform your ship is actually lifted by machine arms and moved into like a large hangar built into the side of the spaceport like an empty hangar and a tube of silver metal connects to your airlock to allow you to disembark into the spaceport itself. Yeah, Fel takes a, a deep breath. Well, guys, uh, I guess I'm back home. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's been years. Uh, whew. All right, let's go. Let's uh, let's go ahead and do what we got to do. I'm, I, I just, I, I don't want my nerves to get to me. You sure you don't want to ring up the folks? Go say hey. Y maybe if we find a minute, but not. I'm just not kidding. Feel, he looks like shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> and Fell is very, very aware of not being able to change his skin, the scarring patterns, and everything, and just looks at Oren and almost tears up a little bit. Blinks them away. And yeah, <laughs> great joke, man. Uh, nice. And I'm, I'm just kidding, buddy. Listen. Yeah, yeah. Relax. So do y'all disembark then into the... Yeah, I was going to say, uh, since Oren's got new armor that's not like external armor... Before he disembarks, so Verses is actually one of the central uh, hubs of worship of uh, Ibra. 
Mm -hmm. shit. It's yeah, it's one of the main places that Ebraic temples and things are, so that Ebrins are, are fairly common. So Oren will don um, a, a a fresh clean set of, of black Ebraic robes with like nice. silver um, uh, star chart patterns on them, and, and that, you know he changes and, and puts that on, and uh, he grabs Evelyn the rifle, and normally when he you know he he kind of like contemplates all of that history as he you know first grabs his rifle but he just feels nothing and just throws it in his back holster like it's just another tool in his mm. toolkit it's just kind of like a hollow empty sort of feeling that he feels for a brief second and um yeah disembarks as well yeah i mean as y'all step off the epic tracer you just step into this central area that's just bustling with activity. Um, there's a couple people at the other side of the tube, the, the airlock that goes into the spaceport, and they're like, Welcome to Versys. We're glad that you're here. Uh, we'll take good care of your, your starship. Things will be great. Um, if you need any information, there's a little info screen over there you can find some great places to stay i'd be happy to give you some recommendation if you want to but i don't want to push too hard what i do need you to do though is i need you to step over here and uh, just let our security bots give you a quick scan so we make sure that uh you know everything's all right you're not a, we don't want to have any reptoids running around here right like uh, so please if you will uh, just just take a take a step over here uh through the the metal detector it's what we like to call it. It's a joke of olden times, you know. <laughs> it detects more than metal. That's the joke, right? Yeah, well, it's oh, also okay. made of metal, though, right? Like, <laughs> Right, right, right. Yeah. You get no, it. No, I you get, get it. it. Oh, are you from here? It. Oh, yeah. you're okay. All right. How are yeah. you doing? Uh, what, what neighborhood did you grow up in? Uh, Jesus. The Bronx. <laughs> Fucking put me on so the spot. <laughs> <laughs> the neighborhood that I grew up in. That's yeah. the neighborhood. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah you yeah. know the neighborhood. Is, uh, did, you know <laughs> Fez, did you know Fezzo? Yeah, yeah, Fezzo's a good dude. Uh, well, he's kind of crazy, you know, like, the years kind of caught up with him. How do you know Fezzo? I mean... Fezzo, Fezzo's like the Chris of this planet. <laughs> <laughs> How we used to go to the same bar, so... Oh, yeah, all right, all right. Well, listen, I'm sorry, I'm talking your ear, ear off. Uh, where are you coming home? Uh, what's what's going on? Where you been? Oh, shit. My, that's none of my business. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm it's so fine. It's fine. I uh, came from Absalom Station. Uh, been out, out there working for damn near a decade now. It's, uh, it's good to be back. Uh, well, okay, welcome back. Uh, what's what's your name there? Uh, Felino Morana. Oh, nice Yours? to meet you. Uh, Bevan. It's real nice to meet you. Bevan. Uh... Just Bevan. Bevan Bevan? <laughs> I never considered doing the double name thing, but now I do like the ring of it. Maybe I'll <laughs> maybe I'll go to the Assembly of Nations and I'll get my name officially changed to Bevan Bevan. That's I like that. it. It's like, yeah, I mean, you like, could just call me BB. <laughs> like who are who are oh, we ABC? to assume that they have you know fr first and last names on Well he's from Fel does. And he's from <laughs> there. Maybe wrong, maybe yeah. his parents are just weird. Kayon Reese does, and he's yeah. from there. That's two people. On and Bevan <laughs> Bevan does, and they're How from many there. other Berthani right, listen, do you know? I'll, listen, I'll have two names in a week, alright? Don't worry about it. It's a good idea. I like it. I'm gonna <laughs> just call me Bebe. You know, Bebe. Bebe. You uh, know, there's like no limit to how high numbers can go. You can get as many names as you want. Oh my God, Bevan, well, Bevan, 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 Bevan. I could have like fifteen Bevans. That's a great, that's a great idea, detector. Bevan. <laughs> <laughs> Step straight Listen. through the robot that does the job. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, they scan you. You know, and. Nothing, they don't no, disarm us. I was no, going to say no. they scan Mike and it's like gun, gun, sword. No, I mean, so consider that this is a time where weaponry is kind of everywhere. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's it's um, so it's not really strange that you guys are fully armored or anything like that. I mean, if you started opening fire in a public space, you know, people are gonna. But like soldiers and mercenaries and and training teams cycle through here all the time like you know this is just like central station you know what i mean and so they're, they're really not sweating 
any of that. They're probably just looking for drugs, maybe any illegal items. Like uh, they but, aren't all over the street. Drugs? Come on. Uh, right. That's their problem. But they don't drugs? want them coming in. <laughs> I would point. think it'd be like. Uh, I don't Fruits know. and vegetables. Yeah, I, I feel and like reptiles. from what I've read of Verses, they're more worried about like terrorism than anything else. Yeah, I mean, I'm, whatever they're looking for, hey, you guys are good. Uh, it checks out. Listen, Phil, I'd love to have uh, drinks with you. Maybe I'll call up Fezzo, and we can uh, we can re- remember old times when we uh, used to play in the fire hydrant when we were kids on the streets. <laughs> <laughs> In that yeah. movie, Goodfellas. <laughs> In that every mob movie ever, you know? Spoiler hey, get, alert. Get, uh, get Fell, Fez, and Bev back together, right? We didn't grow well, up together, I don't but know we could I don't know you, but yeah, we could say that maybe one time we might have seen I each mean, other in the same arcade. Somewhere, yeah, yeah, I mean, I like pizza. You like pizza, right? I like video games. You like video games? Yeah. Uh, there you go. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure we were at Pizza Play a couple times at the same time. You know? Wait. Yeah, Chuck E. Cheese, you know? Hold on, hold on. The original pizza play? The original pizza... Or that bullshit one once they moved? No, no, no. The original pizza play. That's (laughs) the one with the torn up carpet in the corner. Yeah, man. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one. Oh, my God. You went to the original pizza play? Hold on, hold on. Going through the the high scores on the arcades. Were you BBB? (laughs) How did I not get this idea then? (laughs) <laughs> I can't believe it took me this long. But yes, I was BBB. Were you F-E-L? Yeah. Oh, my God. We were Ooh. neck and neck. We would go back and forth. You were the person I was trying to beat. Shit, well, you know what, man? Get, bring it in. Give me a hug. It's 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 been a hell of a trip. And to me, you know, what a childhood are the odds? competitor that I didn't even know that I knew. What are the odds, right? right I mean, the there are like hundreds of people come through here. I'm on gate D today, right? Who, who would have ever known that you... I, I fucking love this this city. It's crazy. You just It's a small town in a big planet. You know what I'm saying? It's Anyway, it's a pleasure <laughs> to meet you for real, Fel. You're Likewise. an incredible gamer. Uh, and I'll call up <laughs> Fezzo and we'll just see what happens, all right? Sounds <laughs> amazing. Oh, my God. Uh, so hey, as- hey, I, I, I really appreciate the warm welcome home. Uh, yeah, of course. That's my job, you know. Uh, I buck up, you know. I can, I can. I, you, you, you're here. You're home. As as they like separate, <laughs> Mike's like, "Hey, look, you're barking up the wrong tree, right? He doesn't date anything without tentacles." Uh, <laughs> Bevan just looks at you and says, uh, "What? You heard I don't, me." Uh, 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 <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we'll see you, and uh, <laughs> just move along. Um, All right, so, buck up. <laughs> so, as you kind of move through this the spaceport, you see these big hollow um, billboards, these holographic billboards, and they're advertising in common and Versite uh, various products available for purchase. Um, but one kind of sticks out to you guys as you're walking through. Because it's emblazoned with the image of a black sphere radiating golden light, um, which you know is the Penumbra app oh. logo, and so you see this giant, like you know, if you see in the picture I have on the map, right? You see how the hollow billboards kind of wrap a whole building. Yeah. So, like, think of that, but on the inside of this spaceport, the whole inside of the dome is just holographic ads in this Penumbra social media app ad pops up, and it covers the entire dome. Jesus. Um, We open uh, fire. (laughs) 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 Should have took our guns. (laughs) So, you know... If you want to keep your ship here for more than a day, it costs 10 credits per day to rent a hangar. Um, so, because Kuvakara is so densely populated, that's why this space 
airport is kind of on an island and up way up above on the outside of it to protect all the citizens. And so really there's just a, like a, a rail system that connects the space for into the city proper. Um, you know, there's some things that we'll want to consider, right? Like you're going to be here for a little while. So you'll probably want to get some arrangements. Um, because it just it wouldn't make sense to take the train all the way back to the spaceport every time you guys want to rest. So what I'm going to ask you is, how nice do you want your f- lodgings to be? Well, are you asking the crew or are you asking Ziva? Yeah, that's... I'm asking, <laughs> I'm asking you as players to have that conversation as a crew. Uh, first of all, how much money do we have in the band fund? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because like, mm. I wouldn't mind doing some shopping... Yeah, oh, there's, dude, I you can get up pers- to... Uh, I have some personal credits, but... You can also get up to any item that's out, uh, up to level 11 here. <laughs> nice. Ooh-wee. I wish I had all the money. But, you know, we can we can handle shopping it's off air and, and come back to it, you know. Mm-hmm. For sure. Um, but there's definitely opportunities for shopping here. Um, as I said, you're going to want to get some quarters here. Um and then I, you know, I don't. I don't Wait, know what else you might want to do, Adam. No, you know what I meant. <laughs> Come on, I had to make the joke. I know. I appreciate it. So, um, I mean, Ziva's not staying in a cheap motel. I mean, duh, right? Like I asked that, knowing what the answer is going to be. <laughs> I mean, and we we shouldn't force we're ourselves the, we're to the, sleep we're the in Apollo squalor. Fucking protection but, agency. But we first also of all. shouldn't get something so ostentatious as to draw notice, right? Well, yes. I mean, of course, you know, you want, but like three and a half, four star. It's, it's a huge. It's a huge city. We right? are minor galactic celebrities at this point. Yeah, I mean, it's I'm, true. It's true. Yeah, I was a celebrity when we started. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, y'all just caught up to me. Uh, so, so here's the deal. There's, there's three options. There's the slumber warehouse. I know you're not going there. That's like basically a, a warehouse for sleeping. That's yeah. a mattress store. Get I'll out just of tell here. you what it is, just because it's, it's funny. It's, it's a, dra- okay. it's a drab building that has a hun- like hundreds of sleep pods that branch. Like you just go down a hallway and it's a room with a sleep pod. Um, I actually stayed in one of those when I went to Japan. The Capsule Hotel. The Capsule Hotel. It was miserable. Yeah. That sounds uh, awful, dude. If you want to like, work. If the upgrade, AC worked, it would have been... If if you uh, want to upgrade at the Slumber Warehouse, you can get one of the small number of efficiency apartments that are available on the oh, top good. floors. Yes. Um, that, that, that would be three credits a night for that, or one credit per night for the pods. We're not doing the Slumber no. Warehouse. I just think it's funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then there's the mid-level hotel, the Dusky Arms, and this is located in the city's south facet. And it offers suites that each contain one to two beds, as well as a kitchenette and a bathroom. So this is like your embassy suites kind of situation. Laundry and dining facilities are located on each floor. A free continental breakfast is available each morning on the ground level of the hotel, alongside a bar that serves steeply overpriced drinks. Um, so the Hilton. Yeah. yeah, yeah, there you go. I'm, I'm kind of disappointed that it's not like an interstellar breakfast or something instead of continental. We'll see. God damn it, Josh. Oh it's, the, it's a Ring God. of Nations breakfast. <laughs> uh, that would be five credits per night. For the Sky Jade, this is a luxury hotel in the city's northwest facet. Fuck it, let's do it. Accommodates high rollers. In spacious suites that include up to four beds, a full kitchen, bathroom, laundry, and maid service. Drinks from the rooftop hotel bar? Complimentary. Free. Drink as much as you want on the well, rooftop. Hey, you, you save all that money from the bar. You yeah. Know, like, right. Yeah. It's so that's steep. 10 credits per night. Worth. For all of us or per person? You can buy a whole suite oh, for four beds. Now there's five of you. Now can we get like one of the pull-in beds for a fifth? Yeah, we'll say that they they, they rent a cot. Yeah, not that's a cot. Kuiper's it's not bed. even a cot, but like they'll roll in like a day bed. 
mm-hmm. a trundle we don't even bed need that. If there's if there's a refrigerator in there, exactly. Kuiper's got his bed. Exactly. Yeah. No, 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 no. I, I just need a cardboard the, the box. The soft of a refrigerator yeah. on my belly. Yeah, yeah all you gotta do is box. ask for a cardboard as, box. No, as soon as we land, Kuiper like orders a refrigerator, takes the fridge out, and sleeps in the box. <laughs> <Just sleeps laughs> in the box. <laughs> hey, mate, that was a gross waste of funds. <laughs> No, it's totally worth it. <laughs> Too bad, Kuiper. I love it. That's pretty good. I love it. That was pretty good. <laughs> um, so what? I mean, what? You know? Come on, what do you man. Want man to we do going to a fancy jade? joint. We're doing the sky jade. All right. Yes. Um, Ziva wouldn't even like that. Wouldn't even be an option. Like yeah. she's e- being hardcore captain, and also e- we didn't get to enjoy our actual fucking vacation. So, so it's, you need a little R and R. I need a little R. I mean, even Mike, who you know has probably slept in some horrible places, is to the point now where he's like, "Nah, fuck that!" Like, <laughs> we're sleeping in the nice digs, you know? Yeah. All right. Well, so when you get to um, Sky Jade, well, no, before you get to that, like when you're coming off the spaceport, it kind of dumps you out on foot. You know, you take this train to like a subway station and then you're just out on the streets. Now, you can hail a cab. There is right here at the end of this, smartly so, a couple of car vehicle rental agencies. So you could rent your own vehicle if you wanted to drive around here. I mean, it's a big city. You know, Let's you're do not that. walking. Let's get our own like a fucking Nissan Armada, dude. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you can do that. Yeah, if you want, we would do that instead of. Yeah, I mean, different. I'm sure that Orin can drive a car. No, yeah. let me drive. You pilot constantly. <laughs> I never get to drive. I don't trust you, Mike. Whoa! <laughs> Damn! <laughs> Just runs right into a light pole. <laughs> and I'll get my own Nissan Armada. <laughs> Mike gets a motorcycle and just rides beside the Fuck right. Yeah. Just Harley, <laughs> Harley mm-hmm. around the city. I mean, you could all get motorbikes if you wanted, you know? I you know, aren't they intercycles? super about that. <laughs> I mean, it's up to you. I mean, we're, we're in a like, well, legit Well, I mean, once everybody's city. piloting, like, I don't know. No, I have Steve doesn't piloting. want to drive. Good enough. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty solid on the piloting. No, we're going we're gonna to go for the Armada. <laughs> yeah. All right, so, like, a big, like, black... You are. I'm getting SUV. a motorcycle. You're getting a motorcycle, huh? Yes. Mike, will rock, paper, scissors for who gets to drive. No. You'll win. <laughs> You'll win. <laughs> You'll be able to read my mind and know what I'm going to do. No, but, but in, all, in all seriousness, I think the idea of like having his own separate, like like being able to ride around by himself, is very appealing to Mike. Like if he's like planet side, and also kind of in a awkward situation where he's been grumpy at, at members of the party. You know, it's a good way to blow off some steam too. Right. Like M- I, Mike I really, is having his midlife crisis. Right yep. now. Mike has been doing midlife crisis <laughs> shit for ten years. Dude. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, for real, I do like the idea of like he gets his own motorcycle. And it's like I'll I'll go where the party goes, but like I want to ride a hog and feel the wind in my scales. You know. <laughs> uh, all right, having well, a so, midlife crisis over here. So yeah. for the motorcycle, you, that's going to be five credits a day to rent that, and for the SUV. Is gonna be also five credits. You're getting ripped off on the motorcycle for sure. But yeah, okay. Um, all I mean, right. I've got my own money. I got like almost six grand in creds because I gamble all the time. Well, and also like think about the fact is like the the motorcycle costs as much as an SUV because of the extra insurance risk. Sure, you know, sure, sure, sure. You know. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, you know, you've able to. You know, procure this stuff, and you arrive at the Sky Jade, and it's. How, how do we get there, though, Adam? Is there like I'm seeing on the map? There's like this crazy network of spaghetti noodles. So those, that's like, that's like uh, the tram system. The trams, the yeah, that's like the L's. Okay, uh, but then the rest of the city is built in a straight up block grid. You know, so you just drive beneath the grid. It, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. How's the uh, traffic? Um, so, like, the thing is, is that where it spits you out, um, let's see here. Let's look. Let's go to the Gazetteer. Let's take it to the Gazetteer. Uh, so, where it spits you out is, like, right in between 
the uh, northeast facet and the gloaming. Mm-hmm. And uh, the gloaming is is a, like a luxury housing development. Um, and so, like, you see all these, like, really nice townhouses and penthouse buildings and, like, some kind of standalone mansion buildings. But they're all heavily gated with, like, significant cyber technology and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, it's... The thing about this is that it, it has its own park, its own beach... Um, and unlike the elevated communities of the Northwest facet, the gloaming is open to paying visitors. So like these rich ass motherfuckers charge people to come look at their lifestyle. <laughs> oh God. Um, you know, there's several upscale hotels and beach and, and there's a beach resort there that cater to the non-residents. Um, but again, like it's so overpriced and it's like the all inclusive type stuff. It's probably like, a little bit, you know, to Heath's point, it's a little bit more spotlight than you'd want. You know, it's easier to blend in kind of the the Ritz Carlton over on the other side. Like we're just average rich people. You're just average yeah. rich people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Not lifestyles of the Vathanian famous. <laughs> yep. So uh, let's see. Both Fell and Ziva, you can roll some culture checks here. Okay. Uh, you too, John. I was about to say, don't leave me hanging on the culture. Yeah. <gasps> That's a nat 20. Ooh. For a 25. Mm -hmm. I mean, Phil would know. Well, I'm giving him a plus 5 for being there, so that 30. takes you to a 30, yeah. Um, Phil, you would know living here, and you probably can like give a little inside gossip here that on paper, the gloaming is owned by a few different corporations, but there's been a rumor that's gone around Kuvakara for a while now that a single individual owns the entire development. Um, and that there's rumors of reptoid sightings here as well uh, at the resorts and casinos here, which might speak to why Bevan was making the joke, you know? Um, mm. But knowing what you know from New Elysium, the Verthani Reptoid, I mean, there might be something to this conspiracy. Who knows? That's a whole other adventure path, I think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Yeah. How um, many folds does that conspiracy have? <laughs> oh, Three, Lord. just like my name, Bevan, Bevan, Bevan. Bevan, Bevan, Bevan. <laughs> it's all coming together. <laughs> Uh, look, I've spent a lot of time cultivating this plot line. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, I mean, so that's the gloaming. And then, as I said, the northeast facet is is basically the island is considered the northeast facet, right? So the lake and the spaceport and everything. Um, so that's where you come out, out. That's where you get your cars. And so... To answer your question in the most long-windedly way possible, the traffic is light here because it's a bunch of rich people who don't need to drive anywhere. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they door dash everything. Exactly. <laughs> right. So, um, I guess you guys are just going to drive directly there, or are you going to take uh, a scenic yeah. route? You can drive whatever you want to do here. Um, no, we're just going to get to the spot so we can kind of like regroup. Sure. Assess situation. So you pass through, you know, you come out of the gloaming, you pass into the north facet of Kuvakara. And this district is more like a patchwork of homes, commercial buildings, and government facilities housed within a network of skyscrapers connected by transparent skywalks and bullet train tubes. The highly coveted riverfront property in this area is the playground of the wealthy so it looks like the the north here is where all the rich ass motherfuckers live right the north not of, the gloaming i mean no like the north of the city in general oh, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 the okay, gloaming but also north facet is is like less the beach rich and more the like posh yeah uptown. well it's also it's also like the more lush section of Kubakara, right, right? Right. There's actual green there. It's it's not bordering yeah. the desert, right? Yeah. Um so this is actually Kuvakara's oldest facet. So this is like the historic area. Downtown. Uh, uh, yeah, this is like the start 
of Kuvakara and it branched out from there, which makes sense because like they started right on the river and just kind of branched their way out into the desert. Um, and so, roll let's roll another culture check here. Okay. Remember, yours is with a plus five here, Josh. Uh, nineteen. It was not a good roll. So that's a twenty-four total. No, no, no. It was nineteen total. It was like nine on the die. What about you, John? I rolled a thirty-two. Ooh, that's pretty good. That's cute. I rolled a forty. Oh my! <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> uh, eighteen on the die. <laughs> all right. Well, I mean, both of you would know this. Um, we'll say that the captain relays this information. Well, are you in a speaking mood? Because maybe Kuiper would jump in here to try to provide some. Yeah, yeah, I, I'll set it up. I'll set it up. Okay. So Kuiper is looking at his data pad, and he's uh, actually looking. He's got the Packed World's travel guide pulled up. And he's just about to talk about what we're, what we're bringing, what, where we're coming up to before. That you want? hospitality yeah. agent <laughs> coming exactly. into play, y'all. Uh-huh. I'm so glad I got a motorcycle. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you know that here there's like local legend that there might be catacombs that exist beneath the facets, current structures. Um, and in fact, uh, Emily Ziva would know just because of her involvement in the like industry of resorts and hospitality and tourism and stuff like that, that they actually do like tours under like the shallows Mm-hmm. Underneath, they don't ever go deep, but there is indeed some relics of like millennia old Verthani civilization under the surface of modern day North Facet Kuvakara. Um, and so, yeah, you, there, you know, you can take tours of the safe sections of these historical ruins. Um, you, Kuiper, you would probably know more than captain because of the type of research you were doing and, and who you are that there are stories of, of explorers and like archaeologists that have it's all legend you don't know of anything confirmed but like some people may have come there to try to like excavate some of this stuff and find some of the ancient secrets and lost treasures that may lie beneath this present day city um yeah, Kuiper's actually doing this like with his voice modulator turned on. But but you also know that there's a pretty heavy interference from local police to keep people from going to get themselves killed, and that it's likely just really dangerous, uh, unstable, under planet crust caverns. You know that they could collapse at any point. You know, and it's really dangerous to go down there, and it's likely empty anyway. You know, but it's, there's this legend that's kind of built up. You know, come see the ancient Verthani ruins, and it's like a little couple square, a couple little rooms that they've, <laughs> you know, Hyped made up. sure that the foundation's good and nobody can get hurt. And like, well, we found the book to dungeon. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so you get to that's the the north facet, and you keep driving. And you finally get to the northwest facet, and this this uh, is where Kuiper you you've been here before, uh huh, because um, this is where your contact lived in the northwest facet. So the northwest facet is is weird because it simultaneously contains some of the best and the worst of the city's residential facilities. Many of the city's elite make their homes here in secure, gated communities accessible only via high-security elevators. So, like, they literally live on these platforms that are above the slums of this facet. And, like, you have to go through all these security checkpoints to ride this elevator tube up into these, like, really nice and beautiful communities. Um, The Below these sky mansions, um, the the shade thrives like and that's the 
this government subsidized housing um, that dominates the ground levels of the northwest facet and in fact right as you're approaching the northwest facet there's like a, a, a ramp that you can take like an exit that you can take that actually goes up to the top layer here to which is where the hotel is and there's like a toll booth there and security checkpoints on that on ramp to get up there mm-hmm. and this is like the exit you don't really want to miss you know what right, I mean <laughs> right it's the hills uh, versus the valley so to speak. right and, yeah. and to that point you know that the area is divided into gang controlled territories and it's rarely patrolled by the city's police um so yeah I mean it's it's this weird dichotomy of of wealth and Josh Fell would know that Kayon Reese grew up in the shade as was Kuiper because Kuiper's done all the research mm-hmm. but Fell you would know that from talks that you've had with him kind of some more of your personal talks that he came from the shade and, and like studied really hard and went to college and, and managed to pull himself out of the shade but that's the northwest facet and you arrive and you pass all these beautiful very modern futuristic mansions that are up on these platforms and a little past those there's this huge platform that has this just grand circular domed hotel and that you've uh, reached at Sky Jade and the dome is this like reflective green dome that looks like it's made of of actual gemstone um, and you approach the doors and there's a valet there uh, when you pull up and so Heath you're driving the motorcycle you probably pull up first in the, in the SUV right behind it with Oren driving um, you can self park if you want or you can valet what do you want to do here I, I'm gonna self park. I'm, I'm not. I'm not paying this asshole just to park this vehicle. It's really not a big deal. We can walk, or I'll just drop you off right here and now. Go All right, over. well then drive on then. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no Orin's, Orin's talking to the people in the, in the in the car. Yeah, right. Fell's like, oh, Orin, Orin, come on. We we're staying at a, a nice place. Like that's part of it, right? Just just tip the guy a credit or two. It's not that big a deal. Fell, I, I, it's just against my principles, man. I don't know what to tell you. Man, here. We didn't have a fucking vacation like we were supposed to get. Have a little bit of luxury, man. Let yourself enjoy something. Phil, we're still not on vacation. <laughs> what? No, 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 no. I drive off and self park. Phil gets out to... at the door. Uh, Ziva would say, uh, Oren, let's actually self park. I would. Prefer that we keep. <laughs> Fell jumps out of the moving car like, yes. let's go. <laughs> People wants to have instant or access quickly to their vehicle and not wait for uh, valet. That was exactly my thought as well. Yeah, yeah. Right, you chums um, can walk. I'm a, uh, I'm gonna grab my shit and go check us in. Fell, just hop on the back here. Blah 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 blah. blah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, all right, so you self park and, and you. And then you go into this hotel and the, and the lobby is just breathtaking. And it's not like, it's like all modern and futuristic, you know, it, it's very sleek edges. There's not a hard angle anywhere. Everything is curved and round. And um, you see at the check-in desk that there's a, a Verthani that's dressed in like a white coat that like kind of, it almost looks like a chef jacket, but it's much more ornate than that. Um, it, you know, it's got this these four buttons that kind of cross over the whole chest and button down the side. It's got this jade trim. Um, and they welcome you to the desk and they say, uh, I, I assume the captain's probably handling this transaction. And, um, yeah, very much so. And it says, oh. Welcome to the Sky Jade. How can we help you? Enjoy your stay. Yes, hello. Um, would like to book a room, a suite, please. 
All right. Well, how many of you will be staying? Um, we have uh, the five of us. Uh, uh, oh my God! All I can think of is Heath. Mike. Mike is there now. Yeah, she they're, says, all, they're all kind well, of just standing she says behind that as, you. As Mike walks up in full fucking heavy armor, yeah, <laughs> off his motorcycle. Oh yeah, yeah. the uh, the receptionist is kind of looking over your shoulder at the party behind you, you know, and you see her kind of cock an eyebrow, but she doesn't say anything. She says, "All right, well, five. Uh, there will be an extra charge for the extra bed, as the suites only have four beds. I assume that everybody is having their own bed. Well, that is an assumption that you could make, but yes, certainly. Let's go ahead and get the extra bed, just in case. The cat she sleeps on a cardboard box. Oh, God, yeah. She would <laughs> wink at the, the person behind the desk just to kind of give them a... Like, she saw them looking at the group like, I wonder what the hell all this is about. So Ziva's just trying to fuck with her a little bit. <laughs> um, and she types a few things and she says... Oh. All right. Yes, we have uh, we have a suite available. Uh, oh, lucky for you, it's Riverside, so you have a beautiful view of the of the river, uh, the Rudoan River. Are you familiar with this beautiful water feature? Uh, is Ziva I feel? I would think like, so. Yeah. Yeah. And from the culture checks earlier. Yeah. 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 Right. Uh, yes, um, if we saw it coming in, and uh, you know enough. It is very lovely. Yes. Um, and she kind of squares everything up with you and says, okay, um, uh, great. And she pushes like a button on the desk and a little door slides open behind her and uh, a bellhop, a little skittermander bellhop comes out, says, uh, hey, hey guys, uh, I would like to escort you to your room. Please put all luggage on this here dolly. Please. Thank you. I was Adam, hoping you would do a sweet heat I was going to say, Adam, my immersion, that's your gnome voice. Anyways. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> come on, man. Come on. Give it a shot, Adam. Come on, come on, come on. Just, just try. No pressure. Come on, man. Come, come on, man. Come on, man. Just man. give it a shot, man. I've, like, literally tried this before and can't do it, so I'm just going to move on. <laughs> Um, so, yes, uh, we, can we please go? <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, ma'am. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm sorry, yeah. this is my first day on the job, and I just want to be really good at it. Oh, uh, it's, all, it's, all, doing, it's all good, buddy. You're doing great. What's your name? Uh, my name is uh, Charles. <laughs> Charles. <laughs> Charles the Skittermander. <laughs> <laughs> And Charles, you're doing wonderfully. <laughs> Fell puts his uh, luggage on the cart and looks to the rest of the group to, to I guess, do the same. I was holding on to my luggage. What'd you say? I'll hold on to my luggage. Uh, oh, same. man. It's, it's fine. This is, this is what my job is. Don't, I mean, Charles, you're watching me the Charles, whole time. Charles, listen to me. Don't force the issue, okay? All right, Don't well, worry, a- Charles. His luggage will not be missed because here's mine. And Ziva would <laughs> unload like twice as many things as a normal person. <laughs> oh, what a treasure for my first day. This is amazing. <laughs> um, and he's just like using all of his arms to just load it on. He's stacking it all up. Like, and it's, you know, he's got this big dolly. You know, furniture dolly, and it's like, oh, okay, is this, is, your, uh, is this your first time here at, at the, the Sky Jade? Yes, Jade it Sky, is. what is the name of this hotel? Is I don't it, even this know. This is Sky Jade. You're doing great. <laughs> Sky doing Jade. Great. You get hired through some kind of, uh, like, uh, <laughs> tip, 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 tip service. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I'm studying at the at the school, and this is my internship. Uh, oh, the school? <laughs> Yeah, the school. hospitality school. Yeah, there's a hospitality school here. I'm sure. I'm I'm gonna I'm walk. Sure. I'm gonna walk next to Charles, and like I'm not giving him any luggage because I just carry everything on me. But I'm gonna have. I'm so much taller than him. I'm gonna have one arm on the top of the like cart thing. Like you know how hotel thing uh, baggage things. They're like tall with the like mm-hmm. gold rails mm-hmm. or whatever. Right. So like I'm 
standing next to him, but my arms over him, and I'm like assisting with the weight of it, so he's not like working himself. To I mean, death. it's got to be a hover cart, right? Yeah, yeah. it's a hover cart, <laughs> but you can still, I'm still help. I'm still looking out for it. You're still it balancing, making sure it falls off. Right, exactly. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, like he's like for the like last little pieces of Ziva's luggage, he's having to jump up to like put him up I, there. I got you, mate. I got you. <laughs> Lift oh, up no, the Skinnermander no, no. and Let the luggage. Let me do it. This is my job. All right, check this out. This is called an alley oop. <laughs> oh God! There it Throw is. Back. Uh, uh. Throw back. There it is. Uh, Throw it back. <laughs> uh, all right, so he takes you to your room, your suite, and it's like you go up this elevator that's like this glass elevator. And it opens up to your suite. You know, like there's not another, like this floor is your suite. So it opens up to a hallway, a small hallway that opens into like a big room, like living rooms with a kitchen kind of attached. And then off the sides are four doors that each go into other rooms. Um, and you know, he, he helps you get all your, your luggage and he says, if you, if you need anything, just give me a shout. Give me a call on the on the phone. Uh, and he holds out six arms with his palms open. Yeah, well, I would imagine he'd have like little beepers, you know, like, because everything's digital. So like, I, I like click a fob onto his little beeper and transfer yeah. some yeah. credits, you know. Like, yeah. Perfect, yeah. perfect. Yeah. Uh, cool, so how much do you give him? I mean, I'll give him like 6,000 credits. credits. <laughs> 6,000 <laughs> credits. <laughs> uh, At least. All of my gambling wins. I'll never have to work a again. Per hand. <laughs> just remember that you all just have to call Charles, and Charles will be here. And I, I want to do good. I need to get an A on my project. Uh, and I was wondering if maybe I could interview you after your stay for a review and that I can use for my, my thesis. Charles, I'd be more than happy to. Uh, is is there any uh, any type of survey or any any feedback we can give you to, you know, give to the management to let them know how awesome of a job you just did? Oh yeah, of course. Uh, right there on the uh, just call, just uh, pull up pull up the uh, the the Sky Jade uh, the Infosphere, and there's a little customer customer com- comments section that. And he, like you can tell, he's like trying to remember the yeah, script that he was supposed to say, but he's already failing miserably it. at it. You know, Phil's <laughs> already pulling it up and giving him like five stars, A plus plus plus. Yeah, like his. Uh, you see, like this little pager on his hip, <laughs> like buzz up with a green light, and he's like, "Oh, yes, that's a high review. Your that, that's a, thank you so much, thank you so much," and he gives you. <laughs> Five credits back. <laughs> oh God! So fell tips and ten. <laughs> like, I'll this take is, that. This is how it's supposed to work. Beautiful. You don't um, pay me for beautiful. review, buddy. Don't uh, pay you sh- for sh- review. Sh- sh- uh, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> this is fine. This is fine. Yeah. I, lo- fell, I love. I love that. That's a, a vest don't press talking the about a skittermander. Don't press the issue. <laughs> you know? Oh uh, yeah, because of the the. Because of how subjugation? Because hey, I no, not because of subjugation, but because of how unrealistically helpful they are. Yeah. Oh, and because the Vesk like know the Skittermander better than just about. Yeah, any but other. like right. Mike wouldn't mm-hmm. really because he didn't grow up as like yeah. in the Vesk. Mike's just being yeah. like, shut the fuck up, <laughs> yeah, take right. the money. Man, yeah, Mike's a packed worlder. You know? Um. All right. Well, so that's you know, you've set up your your. Lodgings. Uh, we'll handle some shopping off air and come back to it in between episodes, right? And you're here. You're here in Versus. You're here at Kuvakara. But as Oren alluded to, you're not on vacation. You are here with a very pressing mission to find Kaon Reese. And your your lead is Eclipse Innovations. And you know that Kuiper knows where that is because of the story he told you. And Fell knows where it is, right? Fell may or may not. He I never mean, would have gone to think, the headquarters. You yeah, know, like, I don't think Fell would know like the address of the headquarters. Like Kuiper would be more up to speed on that. Fell worked at the Sky Dock, which is separate from Kuvakara. Sure. And part and it was owned by Eclipse Innovations. Like they bought it. And so like 
he never would have had to go to headquarters. You know, like okay, it's like working for Walmart, right? Like yeah, and you're not going to Walmart you, HQ. You, right, yeah, right. yeah, you don't know where yeah, the HQ yeah. is yeah. or yeah. any conglomerate like that. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I mean, we get to the like unit where all the rooms are, mm-hmm. and like. Sweet. Yeah, I mean, I just, like, go... I don't even give a shit what room, just the nearest one and, like, sling my rucksack. Yeah, I mean, they're all the same, you know. Yeah. And then come back out, wait a minute for everybody to pick their rooms and shit, and then I'm like, all right, APA time, fellas, and lady, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm tired. What's the plan here? Uh Anyone? We gotta find Kaon Reese. Yeah. Right, but we need a plan to do that. I mean, fuck, I don't know. Uh, I, I've never been to... We march down to Eclipse Innovations headquarters. And then do what? Waiting. What, just walk in? Ask just walk in. Him? Well, it's a strat. <laughs> it's like the opposite of Ocean's Eleven, right? <laughs> <laughs> walk in, take the money. All right. In the movie, roll credits. <laughs> so, like, look, I mean, that's the thing. We don't want to bring a lot of attention to the fact that we're here, right? At least not initially. So, maybe we send our our friend Kuiper here, and maybe Ziva, just you know, the people that can schmooze a bit, and maybe they get they go check it out. Because if I walk in, uh, in armor or out of armor, I'm gonna draw eyes and probably <laughs> not do as good as we could do, right? Yes, I think a more subtle approach would be our best first option. Um, Kepar, you are familiar with this place. Uh, is there any way that we could schedule a time to visit uh, under the pretense of being there for business purposes? I don't see why not. I, we can just uh, pull up the infosphere, find out their number, and reach them, yes. We should be able to place a schedule. Can can I ask you a question, mate? You just did. Uh, (laughs) Thank you. It's quite clever. Uh, How how bullshit was your story about being an hospitality manager from Versys? Like, do you actually have connections? Can you? I mean, could you just set up like a, a fake, you know, meeting for like a business deal or something like that? Unfortunately, it, I'm afraid it was all just a front. Okay, you're a complete fraud. Got it. <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> but it is what it is. What do you I know could of- check my my uh, uh, my contacts. Uh, yeah, that's place, what I was gonna say. But you could, if you, it's probably uh, last I checked, it was ransacked. You could just call him. You know, like you said, just to st- as a start, right? Right, yeah. What about, Would- uh, I don't know, this this may seem like something from the the Holovids or whatever, but... Go for it. What about a, a, a good old-fashioned stakeout? We just, you know, go and sit and watch. See if he comes and goes. See if he's there. See if, like, you know, I, I, maybe, maybe we see him walk in, we... Find out his schedule. Figure out where he goes. Uh, I, I don't. I don't know. I'm. I'm not some investigator or anything. But like, you want to know something about somebody? You just watch and wait. Well, conveniently, we have an investigator here with us. Here, Kyber, a- didn't you? Didn't you say you've been to Eclipse before? Yes, I, I have been to Eclipse before. Now, what we could do is we only need. We can split into two parties here. One can stake. The other can go and try to schedule a meeting. Keep an eye out. Keep comms open. You see what I'm saying? Right. Yes. So I'm not an Eva party. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Mike, I was thinking... You can uh, sit in the Mike, car. You can, you can you come can hang out in the, the Armada with us, man. You it's can it's drive. The Nissan's real spacious. It's got a great sound system, man. You can really rock out in this bitch. Yeah, man. I'm like so not into the like. I'll just go gamble. Like I'll, I will find a way to fuck that up somehow. Mike, my Mike, come on, man, come hang out with me everything. in the Armada. So I have a a question about the Penumbra app. Mm-hmm. 
Is it like it's in it's widely used now, or well, is it like it's, it's, up and coming? It's up and coming, but okay. like people have downloaded like the beta, basically. You okay. Know? So as we're kind of talking, um, Ziva would kind of sort of look through, I guess, the um, Infosphere app store um, and just kind of look at the Penumbra situation. And she would say, Eclipse Innovations is in charge of this Penumbra, yes? That is correct. Perhaps we use a little bit of farce and a little bit of not. Uh, Maybe they are looking for investors or uh, somehow we can get a bit more information about this application under the guise of being interested in becoming stakeholders. Yeah, like I said, a fake business deal. That would uh, certainly get us past the front door. It's a good idea. want to go ahead and give them a call and try and schedule something. And with that, he just pulls up his little data pad. Yeah. Finds the uh, contact information. Right, you start ringing them up and rings and it rings and it rings and it rings and it rings and finally a recorded message comes up. It says, Thank you for calling Eclipse Innovations. We apologize as we are taking some time to restructure our headquarters. Please leave a message for your party of interest. If you know their extension, you can dial it now. Thank you and have a great day. Because of course they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hang up. Phil, huh. can, can you hack a man your way into figuring out uh, the the extension for Kaon Reese? Uh, yeah, maybe. Give me a minute. Check the yeah, info I mean, see if I can. Yeah, be a beep, boop, boop, beep. All right. Uh, that's gonna be a thirty-one. Uh, you see no trace anywhere on the info sphere for an extension for Kaon Reese. He doesn't yeah, even uh, really exist. He's a like, spirit. It's like he <laughs> went the way of Gardenzio. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's like he uh, doesn't even exist. Um, which, considering what he's involved in, I guess makes sense. But uh, they, I got nothing, man. I can't beat a 31 either. That's literally if I hit a 20. So, yeah. Yeah, I rolled an 11. No, I mean, like, that's a success. Oh, okay. Like, it's not there. You know, he can be certain that it's not there. Okay, gotcha. Looks like Kaon scrubbed his info from the Infosphere. Yeah. So we can't. Surely there's a trace somewhere. Yeah, well, I I mean, hopefully, because, I mean, it looks like right now we can't get eyes on him. And we can't get ears on him. Well, well, if we know where headquarters is, we could still attempt to stake out or at least go and see if the building is even still occupied. If the building's under construction right now, we could just sneak in. I mean, it's if probably they're just not, not a bad idea. Actually, under construction, they're probably just like brainstorming about how to deal with, you know, the fucking shit show we just came from. Well. Only one way to find out, Mike. Good old fashioned stink out. Yeah, go sit in a van for ten hours. Great. I mean, what other leads do we have, though? Yeah. Yeah. We don't. I mean, I, I'm I'm fine with it. Heath, like, I Mike hates it because it's just <laughs> sitting around town. You know? I tell you what, Mike. You really should come with us, man. Like, just Mike. There's heated seats in the Armada, man. You're gonna love it. Uh, so unappealing to Mike. Cause yeah, it's not, cause kind of like the entirety right? of New Elysium <laughs> was to yeah. yeah. say. Yeah. You can drive. <laughs> Mike, I'll let you drive the Armada. Buddy. All right, I'll go, go and fucking drive. There you go. I'm, I'm, <laughs> keeping, a, I'm keeping a uh, earbud in one ear <laughs> and listening to Run to Jewels. That's not what uh, I say. All right, well, the thing is, so then you guys are going 
to go stake out Eclipse Innovations headquarters. Mm-hmm. Are you going to do that after like sleeping? Are you going to go do it tonight? What's the deal? Well, time how, does not matter. Time does we, matter. How are we on rest? Because we had just had a trip, had a fitful night of not sleep, pocket dimension, what? shadow. But after planet. that, it was 18 hours. Yeah. So we right. Oh, had okay. Yeah, then I can go ahead and bump my stamina yeah. back up because I lost. Yeah, like, like you guys are, are fully that. rested for sure. And time does matter, Oren and Zach, because, <laughs> like, um, Fair. because you don't know when they're going to pull the trigger on this penumbra thing and already a bunch of people already have the beta you know like for sure if if, if they pull the trigger on the signal it's over Kuvakara yeah. is corrupted you, well, know, then, you can't stop then it let's go right now yeah all right well, everybody piles up in the SUV and you're heading to now a in terms of shopping off, off yeah, air yeah well you could have done that this day right yeah and you can go okay. that night right all right Cool. All right. So yeah, everybody piles in the SUV. All right, I'm stopping he- at Vobby's, though. <laughs> and they're going <laughs> to he- head to Eclipse Innovations. And yes. I will say that's where we're going to end from tonight and do the We'll See You. But I want to actually do a doodly do first. Oodly do. A doodly. Let's doodly do it. About six months ago, a small scout drone, cloaked in shadow, floats through space as it approaches an asteroid in the distance. As it gets closer to the rock, It sees what looks like a small, nondescript facility adorned with all manner of communication arrays, draped in an inky lack of light. The mundane building fails to give any clear indication of its purpose, so the scout drone presses closer. As the drone circles the lab, it notes that the tallest communications dish has evidence of being overcharged. As the feed horn in the center of the dish shows electric burn markings. The drone continues to press closer to the building and the front door of the facility. The door is very simply labeled with the etchings that say, Drift Travel Research Facility. As our view moves through the entrance door, it takes a moment for the drone's cameras to adjust to the even darker interior of this lab. Once the lighting correction finishes, an eerie sight greets the drone, a collection of lifeless androids all seemingly frozen in mid-activity. The reception desk features a feminine android, motionless and covered in dust, fingers still on her keyboard. Deeper in the lab, the scout bot sees the main research center and more androids, eerily still, almost as if they are staged like mannequins. It looks as if something just froze these researchers in place in an instant, forever preserving them in their studies. The computers and machinery that they were working with are equally still and quiet, except in the back corner cubicle, the drone detects a whisper of a beep. 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 The scout bot floats towards the sound, but as it gets closer, a brilliant purple light pierces the dark shadows. However, it seems as soon as the purple light is exposed to the air of this lab, it takes on a sickened, blacker hue. The sudden burst of light washes out the drone's visual feed for a few moments. As the light dies, the drone refocuses on the cubicle and can see what looks to be some sort of small drift beacon prototype, quietly humming with dulled violet light. A panel slowly opens on this device and emits a cloud of black nanobots. The drone hovers almost nervously as it watches the nanobots coalesce and form into a small cloud. Then they move toward the nearest lifeless android and disappear into the mouth of the once researcher. The drone slinks back into the shadows, 
almost as if it is afraid of this sudden activity in the otherwise dead research facility. Moments later, the eyes of the android begin to glow with life in a red light. And with some quiet creaks, he stands and looks around. The drone can hear the now animate body muttering to himself, distressed. The scout bot can only make out a few words. How? Where? The android seems to be almost panicking now, full of disorientation. My friends. And then his eyes land on the little drone. Quicker than lightning, the android reaches out and grasps the small drone and looks directly into the camera lens and speaks. Whoever is watching, where am I? I... I need help. My name is... The android pauses for a moment, seemingly uncertain, as if reconsidering this communication, and then, with their red eyes, looks back at the camera. My name is Eunophanes 6. And then the android crushes the drone, and we'll see you for episode 100! No. You don't get one. It's amazing. (laughs) Hurt me too much. I'm not doing it. (laughs) Uh, Oh, we'll see ya.